Welcome to Elementary Greek 2. Excited to dive in with you to the latter portion of the book. And by the end of the term, we will finish uh, mounts. And I think you will be on your way to learning the, the not only the foundations of Greek, but how to interact with the New Testament and to know God better. So that in mind, as you look at these slides, it would be helpful to have mounts open to chapter 15, and we'll begin with an introduction to verbs. There are several components of the verb, three in fact, and we will repeat these over the next several weeks several times. First, the stem. The stem, or we might think of the root of a particular tense form, carries the meaning of the word. That is where we get the idea of the word. And there are other components that will make up that particular word, but the stem carries the meaning. We then have a connecting vowel. Following the stem of a particular tense form, the connecting vowel bridges to the ending of the verb, the personal ending that corresponds to a particular tense form. Now, those three items provide uh, a, a level of specificity to Greek verbs, uh, as similar to inf other inflected languages, that uh, uh, provides authors an opportunity to nuance an idea one way or another in person, in number, and in the type of action, the time of the action, the voice, the mood of the action. All of these things are a part of verbs. You, you've maybe noticed already in the, the table of contents in Mounts that a good portion of the book covers verbs or verbals even more broadly participles, infinitives, subjunctives. Uh, the information that you're going to see today and the next several weeks uh, will help you to understand the specificity that Greek provides. So we begin with the ideas of person and number. And these, in verbs, agree with the subject. So the first person, I, the second person, you, or the plural, you all. In the third person, he, she, or it, or if it's plural, they. And there is agreement, <clears throat> excuse me, with the verb and the subject that is doing the action, or if the verb is passive, receiving the action. And so in this way, we can know precisely, uh, generally speaking, the subject that goes with that particular verb. So, person and number, but perhaps one of the most um, helpful aspects of Greek verbs to understand is tense form. When we think of tense in English, as Mounts notes in chapter 15, we often think of the time. Present tense means time. Future tense means future time. Past tense means a time of, of the past. And that's part of the Greek verb, the time of action. But we also think about the aspect or the viewpoint of the speaker. And Greek verbs provide a nuance here with uh, how the author views this particular action. Is it continuous? Is it something that is completed? Is it right now at this very point? going on? Or is it viewed from a distance, externally? Uh, this idea of aspect we will talk more about in the future, but just perhaps one example. Uh, there's uh, the, the famous verse in Romans 28, whom he called, God called, he also justified him, he justified, he also glorified. The idea is clearly something that temporally will take place in the future, but the verbal form is a completed view. It's a completed aspect to it. And this kind of a nuance happens regularly so that authors can show a distinction of an action. And we'll think more about aspect in a few moments. 
let's think first about time, and I've mentioned this already, past, present, and future. And now aspect the viewpoint of the speaker. There's a continuous kind of an aspect. The speaker views this going on in process, sort of like a video camera. Or undefined. That is to say, the author or speaker views this without any specific nuance. Generally speaking, com completed, but not necessarily. Just plain, undefined. Or perfective. This is the third kind of aspect that we'll learn about this semester. Perfective often has the idea of wholeness to it. A completed action, generally in the past, and the effects might be even to the present or to the future. Um, it's, it's often viewed holistically. Well, these ideas of person and number and tense form provide specificity, but also voice. Verbs can be active, the subject accomplishes the action. Middle, the subject accomplishes the action reflexively. It's done for himself or herself or for themselves. Or it's done upon them. It's passive. The object, or the subject rather, receives the action. John was hit by the ball, so to speak. It's passive. Well, these ideas of person, number, tense form, which includes both time and viewpoint or aspect, and voice are all part of what makes Greek verbs and verbals specific both to the subject and to the exact idea that the author or speaker wishes to communicate. Let's come back to uh, these main components of a verb again. We have a stem of a particular tense form. That's the root that carries the basic meaning. Then a connecting vowel. And then personal endings that correspond to that particular tense form. Here we have the Greek word luomen. Lu there, the, the root or tense, the, the stem of, of the present active tense form here for luo, and the idea is to loose, uh, luo in the lexicon, I loose, plus the connecting vowel, in this case an omicron, because the personal ending begins with a mu there, the m in English, and whenever a personal ending begins with mu or nu, omicron, is the connecting vowel, and then we have luomen, we loose. Active third person singular personal ending. Well, this concludes our overview of chapter 15 and the basic components of the Greek verb.